Agriculture, the economic backbone of many an African country. For our Wero Korea, potato farming had the potential of making an impact not only in his life, but also in the lives of potato farmers across the country. Believing in the venture, the 30-year-old pumped all his savings into the enterprise. I buy these potatoes in Kinangop, uh, and, and then they are called Shangi. And then in, in Kikuyu, we say Wadua most Mudaga are white. So it means like the, the soil in Kinangop is white soil. And then when you take it to Mombasa, they don't buy, you know, uh, potatoes with white soil for some reason. I, you know, you do your market research and everything, but you can't even imagine that soil can be a cause of your product not being sold, like the soil it's coming from, you know. So that went down pretty fast. Uh, we lost, you know, because we took, up the, we took the product to Mombasa. I had all my savings in the business. Uh, about uh, almost about 700,000 in saving. I, I took lorries in Mombasa, they dropped my, my potatoes and they went back. So I couldn't even be able to take back the potatoes when they told me that the potatoes are not going because of the soil. That was in October of 2014. With all his money spent and with a baby on the way, he had to think on his feet and fast. After going through various ideas, he would settle on one, Inuka Pap. So, Inuka Pub is basically a mobile lending platform. Um, we partner with SACOS to provide SACO members uh, with access to instant loans. Targeting people living in the rural areas, Inuka Pub enables its clients to access small amounts of cash advances as well as other consumer services such as prepaid electricity, airtime and insurance. Waweru was helped to fine-tune his idea at Sinapis. Founded by Courtney Mills and Karibu Nyaga, their organization aims to empower aspiring entrepreneurs with innovative ideas and also give them access to seed capital. So myself, I had myself and the co-founder Karibu. Um, we were at Harvard together doing grad school back in 2008. And I was doing a thesis um, for, for graduate school. And it was all about how do you remove bottlenecks in the private sector in Kenya? What is holding the country back from reaching this economic tipping point that actually means it's going to be among the fastest growing, most interesting countries in the world? We felt like Kenya was on the, the verge of this, but what was holding it back? The business accelerator began with only seven startups in 2010. Since then, Sinapis has accelerated more than 600 entrepreneurs. Each year, between 250 and 300 graduates pass through the intensive four months course. Synapis also offers a more intensive six months course for businesses that they feel can grow to a level that is substantial. It makes everything worth it for us because when we see the, the Waweru's or the Daniels, you know, one of our 2012 entrepreneurs that just closed a six million dollar deal or the Gideon, someone who came from being a cleaner at a restaurant making you know, 4,000 shillings a month to now having a school with 800 students that scored fourth highest in Nairobi County. I mean, you, you start to, to feel like you're having a real impact. Um, Synapis has now created, uh, we've accelerated over 600 companies, Kenyan companies. Um, we've created nearly 2,000 jobs those 2,000 jobs are supporting six to 8,000 people economically. Due to the success of the program, Sinapis is in the process of launching the entrepreneurship classes in Kisumu and Mombasa next month. They hope to unearth the next Waweru Korea in these cities. Through their partners, the firm is also introducing the classes in Ghana and Brazil. Well, I think, I, think, I think things have changed a lot over since, I, since I first did my thesis in, tw in 2008, for example. There was hardly any sort of ecosystem for the early stage entrepreneur. Now, it's really starting, there's investors flocking here, there's a lot of programs. Um, 
I think there's, there's a lot of interest. But what's been really interesting is we've been part of the journey since the very beginning. So we've seen it go from a country which didn't have a huge amount of interest in entrepreneurship to now being on the forefront of that wave in Africa. And it is these favorable conditions that have encouraged risk takers like Waweru to establish their own businesses. Uh, what are the customers saying? Can you come here and tell us? Uh... Inuka Pub currently has five employees and it is these employees that Waweru believes makes the company unique. We've been able to put together some of the strongest talents in this, in this country and in, in, in the world in general. Uh, we have very strong partnerships uh, with uh, very relevant investors uh, in this country and out of this country who are, who are very driven to empower people in rural Africa. Um, so basically, Inuka Pap is just a platform. Courtney though believes that mentorship does play a role in the success or failure of a startup. Entrepreneurship is a lonely road. You know, you're, you're, you're casting yourself off into your own kind of vision and you're having to, to convince people to come around you and to follow that vision and invest in that vision and to take a chance on you. So when you're alone in that journey, even if you have a few co-founders, the experience of those who have done it before or who can help you avoid the major mistakes that most entrepreneurs make is invaluable. But our taxman may not be to such. Before establishing Inuka Pub and making a foray into the farming industry, this serial entrepreneur had run his own insurance agency for nine years. So when you have mentors and you make those mistakes, and you had already been warned by your mentors, it's very much, it, it's, it's so much easier for you to get out of the mistake and even uh, much faster and you learn more uh, when you make those mistakes. Because some mistakes I think in life are just inevitable, but when you get to know that you're gonna make those mistakes or there are such kind of mistakes to be made, that makes it very much easier for you to foresee and even learn quicker how to get out of it. However, like any other business, Inuka Pub does have its own unique set of challenges. I mean, we are a mobile lending platform, and as silly as it sounds, uh, a lot of people think that we lend money. We are a mobile lending platform, and so I have a dozen of friends who call me when they are on their, at their lowest. They are like, well, where, uh, can I get money now, you know? And I'm like, I wish I could get money now myself because I'm not a lending company, uh, I'm, I'm a lending platform. Um, we, that kind of a problem became you know, so big such that now when we are on uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, we've had a lot of people request for loans on, uh, from us. And so what we decided uh, to solve that problem was we partnered with the circles that we are working with, developed an application that allows users to download and access loans, on uh, timely loans, instant loans, higher purchase loans, uh, asset finance loans right on their mobile phones. But still it's not us uh, doing the lending, it's the circles that we are working with that are doing the lending of our mobile platform. Lack of knowledge about the app might be explained by the fact that Inuka Pub is only one year old. This year, the company is embarking on popularizing the product to potential customers. Um, I mean, we are working very closely with, uh, you know, governing bodies like SASRA, Cusco. Uh, we are working very closely with the, with the communities, like rural communities themselves, because they will lead us to the circles that um, have the potential that we are looking at. Because our focus circles are circles that are out there to help their members. Um, the circles who are using our platform because of you know the programs that we've gone through in the past and the access that we have to investors the potential of the business and what we want in up to be is not just a mobile lending platform but the circles that use our system also will get more services from Inuka Pub, which are to introduce them or to connect them with uh, external investors who can pump money for them to lend more to their members, empowering you know, the rural communities. So what words of advice do Courtney Mills and Waweru Kuria have for budgeting entrepreneurs? If they'd have the focus on the customer first and just gone to the customer and said, this is what I'm thinking about creating for you. What would you want 
If I were to make this, what would you, would this be meeting a need? And having that honest conversation with them first and saying, what kind of price could I charge for this? And just getting that information from customers first and then building off of the customer need and then learning slowly, how do I sell this thing? Then after that, really focusing on now let's build the product or service. Now let's get the office, but only after we've started to generate some cash flow. My advice for a younger me would be connect yourself to people who've been there or connect yourself to organizations. Nowadays we have accelerators, we have incubators, uh, we have uh, programs that empower entrepreneurs. I can assure you, you might think that you can do it by yourself, and you're probably right. But what I can say is that if you do it with somebody else, somebody who's been there, somebody who understands business, you will do it way faster than you would do it by yourself. And so I would say find somebody who has been there, find an accelerator or an incubator, and uh, I can assure you that you will be successful in a very short time compared to just running the business by yourself.